What's good, mind speakers? I'm back with another video, and if you click this video, you're probably chomping at the bit because this topic has been a large topic of conversation in the comments. Every video that I post, no matter what I talk about, no one cares about what I'm talking about. All you guys seem to care about is weight. So we are gonna talk about weight, we're gonna talk about weight loss, and what we're gonna talk about is how it feels to have lost a massive amount of weight and what that means emotionally to me in my experience. Now, if you click this video to talk about methods, how can I do, drop the workout routine, how much weight did you lose? We're not discussing any of that because that is part of the problem. People are so caught up in the transformation aspect of losing weight that they forget that there's a human in there. Like big people are people. I may have lost a lot of weight, but this is the same soul. And you're gonna hear me repeat that a lot of times during this video, but that's the truth. And so although the methods are important, the methods don't mean a goddamn thing if you don't feel good about it. So I'm talking about my feelings and my experience as to what it feels like to have gone through a massive amount of weight. I am very proud of my numbers. One day when I do that video, you guys will know just how proud I am of those numbers. Your boy did the damn thing. But we're gonna talk about that later. The first thing we're just gonna talk about though is what it's like. Because I feel like there are so many people out there, so many larger people out there, people who, you know, may not want to go through a weight loss transformation or might be trying to, but people don't hear them. But there are a lot of people who are listening to me right now and will only hear me now because they want to come and get the secret. Well, guess what? You are getting the secret. The secret as to how to treat the bigger people in your life and how to treat people while they go through their weight loss transformation and after. So that's the video you're getting. Maybe it's not sensational enough, but I don't give a shit. So if you want to stick around, that's what we're talking about. Let's get into it. Let's go. So the first thing that I noticed about losing a mass amount of weight is winter is brutal. Bro, I ain't never been no hole in the cold. I went to college upstate in New York. It got up to negative 30 degrees at times. It was fine. We were still going out. We was partying. Honestly, anything to about... 20 degrees, I only needed a sweatshirt. I never really needed a jacket. Let me tell you something. If that temperature goes below 30, I could use a jacket now anytime up to when it's 40 degrees outside. And that's nuts, because that is not who I am. That's not what I know. In fact, I had to scramble and get some jackets this winter, because I didn't even have any jackets. I didn't need them. All I needed was my sweatshirt. And then when I was bigger, I always rejected the notion that, oh, well, you know, you're warm because you're big, and da, da, da. I was like, no, that's not it. I'm just warm. I don't need it. Uh-uh. No. I need it now. So I don't know if that's a thing, but I know it's a thing for me. It's cold now, straight up. Another thing about extreme weight loss, people are just suddenly so excited to see you. And you're angry about it. I gotta say, I don't like that, you know? You think that when you're bigger and people treat you like you're invisible, cause they do, or there's a certain amount of general cordial that you get from people, that's nice, but it's not real interaction. And so you think, you know, once I lose this weight, people are gonna wanna be near me, people are gonna invite me out, and you know, things is gonna change, and they do. However, you could be the person that is okay with that. And I know people who are like, yeah, like I love that more people wanna talk to me, and that da 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 da, but I'm not. I don't feel that way. I was the same person in here when I was big and that makes me feel weird now watching people want my attention or want to talk to me or want to be near me or or want that retweet or want to tweet me now and like y'all didn't give a shit about me before. And that just made me really zero into the people in my life who were here and who didn't give a shit or who did give a shit and was like, nah, I'm gonna help you through this. But people who saw the worth in me and the worth in my soul when my body wasn't caught up to them. You know what I mean? Like when I was bigger, people just didn't really fuck with me like that. But I'm gonna be honest, and now it's, it is a lot different. Like, uh, more people wanna talk to me, more people wanna invite me out, more people want me around, more people want my attention. People who I maybe I may have wanted attention from before are giving it to me, and I don't want it, because now it feels hollow. So it makes you feel really weird about social interactions. Or at least me, because I'm a different type of person. I know people, some of them are just like, yeah, of course you wouldn't have been interested in me before, but now you are, and that's cool. I reject that. Fuck you, because I was a good person, and I'm still a good person, and I'm the same person, I look differently, and you're not allowed to process that differently because of something I went through. That's not up to you. Either you appreciate who I was before, or you don't get it at all. Point and the blank. Another thing about extreme weight loss, people either want to talk about it at length, or not at all, and either way, it's annoying as fuck. 
I look so much different than what I did last year or the year before. I do, and I know I do. So, you not bringing it up makes me feel weird because I'm like, I think somebody trying else? to set me up. Like, it's, it's obvious. I li just say it, say it. Yo, you look good, whatever, boom, boom. Hit it and quit it. But people who decide like, wow, wow, you look so good. Oh my God, what did you do? How did you do it? What did you eat? How many carrots a week? Bananas? Apples? Do you not eat fruit? What is it? Is it keto? What did you do? That is annoying as fuck. Don't do that either. Just tell someone that you notice and you acknowledge and that they look great and move on. Let's go back to having human conversations. Wait, it's not that big of a deal, but people who make it too small of a deal and too big of a deal are equally as annoying. So stop doing that. Just acknowledge it and move on. Hit that shit and quit that shit. Quit. Another thing about extreme weight loss that nobody tells you is that I had no sense of style. <laughs> not like, I still don't think like I'm like the ultimate fashionable being because I always say that I look like an off-duty basketball player at all times. Like you never know when there are gonna be shorts underneath these jeans because listen, you can, anybody can get the work at any given time. But I didn't have a concept of now that things are available to me, what is popping, like what should be available to me. I probably, had it been a size where I could fit most of things since probably 2013. So if you're thinking about the way things have advanced since 2013, your boy can't log on the Karma Loop. And, you know what I'm saying? Like that's not what the market is now. But that's what it was at one point. And it takes a lot of catching up to do. All my friends keep telling me if they see another black V-neck, they're gonna fuck me up. But I'm just like, I like black v-necks, I do. But I think I'm moving in 2020 away from the black v-neck era. We have some other eras coming up, but it's still gonna be monotonous and they're still gonna be mad, so. Sorry about it. But the best part of being able to dress yourself is that you feel way more confident when you're out because you're wearing what you really want to wear and it fits you how you want it to fit you. You get to make those choices. And sometimes when you're bigger, you have to go with what's available. And that sucks. Now, I get to say, eh, I like that or I don't like that. Or I'm a size where I'm like, oh, if that doesn't come in this size, well, I can get it in this size. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's a way more comfortable shopping experience. I used to get so frustrated shopping and looking at the tags and seeing 5X and all this other shit. Shit used to fuck my head up. And like now I'm so much more confident, so much more well adjusted. It's like, oh, if I don't fit this size, I can just get it in this size and it doesn't really matter. It's all that is released from me and, and shopping and the way that it's a bigger conversation than what I'm going to get into in this video, but it feels good. Feels really good. <laughs> another thing, another thing, which is a big one. Some people are not happy for you. Let me repeat that. Some people are not happy for you and they might not be the people that you think they are. Looky here, babies. And my big people know exactly what I'm talking about. My fellow biggies, what up, y'all? You play a role in your society, in your ecosystem, in your friend groups and all that shit. You play your role. And sometimes, when you're the bigger one, your role may not be competition. There might be, you know, most of the time, honestly, there's only one fat nigga per group, I'm gonna be honest. And so your friends might not be exactly happy about this new attention that you're getting. But I urge you to really zero into those friends and then reevaluate your relationships. I've done a lot of silent reevaluating of the people that I'm allowing into and not into my life because of this weight loss transformation, because I've watched people be jealous. I've watched people not give it up, not be happy. I've watched people decide that they don't want to like photos. People who would like all the photos when it was 30 likes, they don't like it when you when you get in 300. You know what I'm saying? Like they're like, oh, I'll queue for your 30. But when you get in 300 and they get 150, then all of a sudden it's an issue. All that shit plays a part in your relationships. And it's up to you to figure out now, now that I am a priority in my own life, now that I'm a priority in society, do my relationships reflect my unhealthy lifestyle or my former unhappiness? Because I guarantee you some of them do. And when they do, it's up to you to make that decision to choose you the way you chose it to lose the weight in the first place. A lot of people are very comfortable in the ways that you were uncomfortable. And it's time for you to realize that and let them go. They ain't worth it. Another thing that people don't tell you about extreme weight loss is that you can get way less sleep and be okay. <laughs> I can sleep now for six hours and you know, I'm never gonna like mornings, but if I get six hours, I can go the day. I used to need at least 10 hours or else everything was messed up. And I can't believe I did all I did 
with that like I played competitive college basketball at over 300 pounds graduated from college on this non restful sleep and I always felt like this was so hard for me but it must have been equally as hard for everyone I totally wish that I could go back to 18 years old and feel the way that I feel right now and really be able to just do it healthily and feeling like, oh, I have enough hours in the day. If I took a nap and I slept all night, I was still dead tired. And I thought, oh, well, it's because you're an athlete. Oh, well, it's because you're in college. Oh, well, you know, work is hard and you didn't go to bed till whatever last night. And it was always an issue. But now I know in hindsight that it was just being fat is hard work. Your body works very hard to sustain that. It does. It takes a lot of work to run your big body, baby. And I know... People don't want to hear that. That's the truth. It takes a lot of work. And being in the body that I am in now, it takes less work for me to run it. And it gives me more time in the day. Like I can get up and I can film and I can edit and then I can go to the gym and do whatever else I have to do and still go to bed and do it all over again. But that was not the case two years ago. <laughs> no baby. So my sleep is totally better besides, you know, the anxiety problems, but that has nothing to do with weight. But you get it. Another thing nobody tells you about extreme weight loss is you feel like a ninja. Like, and that's a great thing. Like, I feel more like myself now. But I would say about like four to six, seven, eight months ago, I just, it was like, woo! Like, I felt so light. I was in the gym. I wanted to just like... It just felt really good to move my arms and to move my legs and to be able to stretch. I took up yoga, anything that would just give me the ability. I was so grateful for the ability to move. If I'm near someone and anybody needs anything, I'm the first one to be like, oh yeah, I can get up. Because being able to get up and feel good getting up is a tribute to how hard it was to get up before. Like I remember my mom asking me like, oh, can you do this? Can you take out the trash or whatever? All other chores and stuff. And I just would not want to do it. It would make me mad because it took a lot of energy to do it. And now, whenever anyone asks me to do anything, if I'm anywhere, I can just, I get up and I, you know, hey, let's do it. It's, it's oppa. Not that I always want to, but I just remember how hard it was. And I like, feeling that gratitude of how easy it is to do physical activity and that is what keeps me in the gym and that's what I just remember so much of how hard it was to do all that that I don't take my ability to do any of the things I can do now for granted you know anytime I can dunk a basketball it's like hey and anytime I can you know my legs can give out because I'm old now and I can kind of get hung on the rim and boom, I, no matter hey like it's all fun. It's all good physical fun and I'm just loving being here and being able to move. Let's walk a mile. Let's ride a bike. Let's do some shit. Who cares? Another thing nobody tells you about extreme weight loss is that body dysmorphia is real. It is real. It is real. It is not no social media made up Hannah Baker ass shit. It is real. It is so real. There were times where like I would still dream in the other body and then I would wake up and not recognize my forearm like that's weird um there were times where i would wake up to film and i'd be like all right well i have to film and i would check the scale and it didn't reflect what i wanted it to reflect and it would fuck my day up i didn't want to be on camera i felt that on camera like body dysmorphia and how you feel it's all just it's a never ending kind of thing and i think that's what drove me to the gym more is that i just needed to connect to keep connected to keep feeling like okay well it's not perfect but it will be it's not perfect but it will be it's not perfect but i'll work it until it is it's not perfect but i'll work it until i love it and i'm still there because the body's not perfect and it, it never will be but that's my point is that like the gym helped me just feel like i'm playing much more of a role than food ever will because food is its own thing. Your processing of food is its own thing. That's a different thing. But I've always had this connection to this physical activity because I'm an athlete. So that's how I keep grounded. And some people are able to diet and that's all they have to do. And I've seen people lose a ton of weight only doing diet, not going to the gym. Because most of it, honestly, is what you're eating. That's the truth. No one wants to say that, but that's the truth. However, I needed to add that aspect to connect my mind to my body. It's almost like a ritual to make me feel like I'm present in the moment of getting this shit together, if that makes sense. So yeah, body dysmorphia is very real. And sometimes 
people say you look good and it makes you annoyed because you don't you don't want to be consumed in that way like if I don't feel good about what's going on I don't want you feeling any way about what's going on and I'm more of over that now but that was a problem for a while so just gotta bear with it when it comes you know comes in waves another thing they don't tell you about extreme weight loss is all of your problems are not Fixed. I used to blame every single thing on my weight. These people aren't attracted to me, you know, because I'm big. But when I'm not, it's good. These people don't hit me or maybe they don't invite me out because I'm big. And you know what? You know how that is. Like, it is what it is. They don't want to make me feel bad. Or I didn't get invited to this because of that. Or, you know, not enough room in the car. Shit like that. But when you lose weight and that stuff doesn't change... Some of that stuff's not gonna change. You're still gonna have to worry about money. You're still gonna have to worry about family and relationships and everything else. It, it, I know being big is the epicenter of the life of the big person, but once that's gone, you realize how much of a mess everything else might be. <laughs> and those still need tending to. This was just one check mark on the list of things you have to do in life. And it's a very big check mark, but all it ever will be is a check mark. Whether you're big, whether you're thin, whatever you have to do, your life's work, your soul work, your interpersonal relationships, all the problems and all that stuff will be waiting for you at the other end of it. So yeah, it, it does suck when you realize that because you're like, I just got like, I'm just done this thing. You expect to just run through this yellow tape and be like, yes, I'm not fat, life is perfect. It's not. New problems arise. New levels, new devils. Cranes in the sky. Like, for real. And you can either let that drive you to, you know, say, yeah, I did this amazing thing, I can do so many other amazing things. Or you can get, like, really, like, depressed and down and be like, it's never ending, it's always something, and that's your choice. So choose right. And last but not least, the number one lesson that nobody tells you about extreme weight loss is that at the end of the day, Although tons of great things are gonna come from it, the most it's ever gonna be is bittersweet. It will never be what you think it is. It will never change all the things you think it is. And you have to mourn this idea of the perfect body. Because even the people that are your thin inspirations and everything else that you do, all the people that you follow on Instagram and wish that you looked like, they don't know that you find them that perfect. They could never experience themselves the way that you experience them. They don't feel perfect. We're all human beings. Even the most perfect people are hyper aware of their imperfections. And when you lose a ton of weight, yeah, there's gonna be skin, like, duh. There's gonna be things that you don't like and, and you will be like, damn, I've gotten down to the same weight as this person that looks like this and I look like this and what the fuck. It's gonna be annoying, you know what I mean? It's gonna feel disheartening. You're gonna feel like, Maybe you didn't do enough, but I'm here to tell you that you did. You did, you did enough, you did the thing, you did your job, and you did your part. And you have to make peace with that, and you have to make peace with the new you. But all that is gonna take time. It's gonna take time, there's no end game. I spoke in the last thing I said about the yellow tape. There is no yellow tape, there is no finish line. And that's why the song that I've kinda really clung to this entire time that I've been trying to go through this experience and trying to navigate and trying to just get more healthy and it's been the best thing that I've ever done. The best thing that I've ever done. For real, for real. But I constantly over again play Cranes in the Sky by Solange because that song means, yeah, you've done a lot of work, but look at that sky and there's always gonna be a crane in it. There's always work to be done. You will always strive towards perfection and you will never reach it. But if perfection is your goal, that's just gonna add to your unhappy. Learn to be happy with who you are and what you're giving right now. Be present in every room right now. If you're big and you're big in this room right now, be present in that room and know that you've brought your best self to that room. Who cares? And if you are in the situation where I'm at, where you know, you've lost this weight, don't feel like, well, am I enough for this room now? Who cares how they feel about you now? It's who you are. Be who you are in every room. Weight is what you are. But be who you are, because if you keep focusing on the wrong stuff, weight's gonna change. It's gonna change. I won't look like this forever. I don't, I, you know what I mean? If you watch my channel, you guys know that I came from a different place. I never thought I'd look like this. But I also know in three more years, I won't know what I'm gonna look like then. Who knows? I could look thinner, I could look bigger, I could have tattoos, I could, who, everything could change. 
You never know. So you just have to be grateful for who you are now and what you give now and not be so focused on you know what you want. Because it's bittersweet at the end of the day. You're never gonna have the perfect body. Get over it. And that's all right, you're enough. And the people that love you, love you. And the people that don't, don't. And whether they change or not, who cares, you know? It doesn't mean as much as you probably thought it does. And I know that's easy for me to say now, but it doesn't. Anyway, those are the things that I've learned that nobody tells you about extreme weight loss. I hope that you guys ingest that message. Yeah, sure, we're gonna do the other video where we talk about method, we talk about how, we talk about my numbers and everything you guys wanna know to get into my business. Sure, in the future we will do that, but now it's more important for y'all to reevaluate how you treat the larger people in your life. They deserve to have attention paid to them. They deserve to be treated like priorities. They deserve to be included. They don't deserve to suffer in silence and they don't deserve to hate themselves. And I think the people around larger people have to do a better job at making sure that they feel just as taken care of as they make you feel taken care of. Because I guarantee you, your bigger friend is a great friend. So start being a great friend to that bigger person or a family member, because that is also a thing. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys, you know, have anything else you want to add, we can continue the conversation in the comment box below. You guys already know how I get down. I love your guys' perspective on that. And yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If not, suck a dick. And I'll be seeing you guys later. Deuce.